if I can hold it together My eyes are starting cold with the weather October forever, I'm over the terror I'm part of it now I don't know if I can hold it together My eyes are starting cold with the weather October All right, cool. No, yeah, I appreciate you guys jumping on. Um, I I honestly haven't been listening to you guys for that long. Uh, I have a buddy named Lucas who was like, dude, you have to listen to Driveways. And I was like, all right, you know, and, and, you know, you know, the, the whole thing, you, you, someone tells you to listen to a band and you're like, ah, oh, you're kind of in your own rotation of music that you're listening to. And then I, he was like, have you listened to Driveways yet? And I was like, no. And so I finally did. And I was just like, holy shit, what have I been missing out on? You know? So when, when, when I first heard you guys after that, I was like, well, you know, I wanted to share you guys on, on coffee and sugar and, you know, that's kind of what we do. And then I was like, well, you know, I'll, I'll take a shot, reach out, see if they'd be down and come and chat. And, you know, I, I really appreciate you guys being, being open to it. Oh, well, absolutely. Thanks, thanks for asking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Thanks for asking. Yeah, absolutely. So how I like to do these things is just keep it really lax. I don't have like a ton of questions and I want it to be more of a conversation as, as it should be. And so I do like to start out with just kind of in introductions and kind of introduce the band, who's all part of it, what you guys do in the band, and we can kind of just go from there. Yeah, sounds good. I'm, I'm Pat. Um, I play guitar and sing in driveways. Um, and I'll speak for Ryan. Ryan could, couldn't be here tonight. He's stuck late at work, but Ryan's our drummer. And I'm Derek, and I play the bass. Cool. And when did driveways start? Um, we, I always mess up the, uh, D what was it? 2015 that we started or 2016, 2016. Officially it was probably 2016 was like the first thing it was put out in 2016. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 2016 was when I think we might've been recording a little bit in 2015, but we always like the band started for real in, um, 2016. And were, were any of you guys in bands prior to driveways? Yeah. Like, uh, like Ryan and Derek both were, um, growing up, we had like a, we're from like the North, the North shore of Boston. And there was a good little scene around here with some heavier music and scene music and whatnot. And Ryan and D were in a bunch of bands growing up. I really wasn't, <laughs> um, but I just played guitar in my basement like a loser. And I was friends with Ryan and D <laughs> and then we started a band. <laughs> and so you, did you guys like kind of, I don't say grew up together, but like, when did everyone kind of, I guess, inter, uh, intermingle <laughs> to kind of get things going. Well, D, I think you and Ryan go further back. Me and Ryan were, were friends in middle school, but D, you, Ryan and you have been hanging out for a long time, right? Yeah, probably, probably about around that time. I've known Ryan, uh, yeah, since we were like way back in the day, touring way back in the day with our, our little bands. But, um, but yeah, I knew of Pat, the infamous Pat Finnegan, but... <laughs> Never really knew him as a person until uh, driveways happened when Ryan asked me to play bass because nobody else wants to hang out with those two guys. So <laughs> <laughs> so when you say way back in the day when you were touring, what what did that look like? That was uh, sleeping in a van, playing to four or five, if that many people every night. I mean, Ryan at the time was probably eight. 18 yeah, like maybe 18 he was, no, yeah he was the youngest of the the scene right maybe if that i know he was still in high school actually so it might have been younger than that but but yeah living living that life back that was probably in 2008 seven six i think around there mm -hmm. and and what was what was that band what was what were you all called? Uh, ryan's band was called uh 13 yards to victory and i was at a band called ashland this like probably four people that heard of those bands why why do i feel like i've heard of ashland before is is it no, you, 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 haven't. you haven't i haven't i haven't okay <laughs> no. it sounds familiar so i was like i feel like do you do you guys still have like music out there or uh it's just kind of uh, no 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 this was like it was probably right before everything when everything was on spotify and everything was online it's probably right before that because mm. I still have like 300 CDs in my basement of, of the band <laughs> that we didn't sell. So, dude, the days of buying CDs and uh, putting them in CD players uh, 
was was quite the time we just put out a uh, post like last week or i don't know that was like what was the first cd like physical cd you ever bought and mine was afi december underground if you're familiar yep yeah oh, yeah great album what what was y'all's i think mine was uh i think it was dude ranch by by blink i'm pretty sure that's the one with the cow on the cover, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I have a memory of going to like Sam Goody or something and buying that when I was a kid. <laughs> Sam Goody. That's yeah. a name you haven't heard in a while. <laughs> yeah. What, yeah I, I double what, dipped on my first one. I think it was, uh, I got Dookie, Green Day's Dookie, and also Dr. Dre, all the same trick. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I, I've heard Green Day being like the first album that people have bought like physically too. Uh, which is kind of cool. I mean, they're they're iconic, and I think that they always will be. You know, oh for sure, of course. Um, so let's talk. I kind of want to talk about like y'all's beginning music that you first put out, and and kind of what inspired that first kind of set of music uh, songs, um, EP, and kind of move in from there. Yeah, the um the first EP we ever put out in. 2016 was called side mirror and um R- like ryan and i we had a couple of projects like kind of like in between the time when ryan and derek were like touring the country like having fun and when we became like adults <laughs> and like <laughs> we worked on a few projects that kind of we never this we kind of took the songs all down but uh some of it so- in a, to an extent sounds like driveways and um mm-hmm. And so when we were working on Side Mirror, actually some of the ideas on Side Mirror were left over from this project that we had called North and South. And um, so a couple of those songs were old and then we wrote a few new ones. And then, yeah, that, that was actually before uh, D was in the band. It was just Ryan and I um, in the studio. And then, and yeah, it was just, you know, just trying to take things I would say in a li- the project that we had um, that I was just talking about was like a little more like, um, I don't want to say like folk is the right word. I don't know. A lot of like acoustic guitar and like a little uh, less upbeat. And we kind of wanted to go in a little bit more of like a pop punk direction. Um, so that's what we were trying to do with side mirror. And, um, and yeah, that was really it. I, I got, I actually, that the pick the album cover for that CD is real life. I used to drive a Subaru Forester and I got my side mirror uh, smashed off my car on route one <laughs> up here. And so we took a picture and that's the album. <laughs> Hell yeah. No, it's, that's, that's, that's so dope. Um, and, and one of the things I noticed throughout, I went on a deep dive, you know, at first uh, when, when my buddy Lucas told me to, to listen to you guys. And then I kind of went back on a deep dive today while I was working just to kind of get ready for, for uh, this little, this interview. And yeah, I, I was curious, where did the Halloween theme come from? Is it just, <laughs> you guys love Halloween or is it, there's, more of a deeper meaning to it i wish i had a, a cooler answer for this <laughs> <laughs> i really really die honestly like I, when that when the show stranger things came out i really just liked that show i'm like I'm, i was a huge fan of like the music in that show and like the some of like the 80s like synths and whatnot that they use in it so we put out night terrors like kind of influenced a little bit from that with a few songs on there we started getting heavy into like keyboards and midi and stuff like layering on our songs and I don't know. It just kind of fit. We like, we just so happened to put out night terrors in the fall that we weren't doing that deliberately. And then I just feel like it was kind of like, um, like an aesthetic or something, whatever the right word is for that, that I was like, I don't know, let's do it again. So then we put out skeletons. And then since then we've kind of always put something out in the fall. Um, yeah, like it just kind of happened. I, I wish, I wish I had more of a story for it. But it just No, that's cool. We, I mean, yeah. like more importantly, you got like, the the recording schedule yes that's a good call dude. <laughs> pat, pat and i are teachers so we get the summers off but pat usually slaves away the whole summer and it works mm-hmm. that's that's what in the studio so that works out yeah it's the perfect uh, time fall, to, fall to put out music for us yeah like start playing it in the spring track over the summer put it out in the fall so you guys are teachers what grade do you teach i teach uh freshmen and sophomores d you, you teach a little bit of everything right yeah, at the high school, nine through twelve, I got them all. Nice, nice. My my wife's a teacher. She's a elementary, uh, so. Oh, nice. Where where are you yeah. guys? 
I know, right? Could you see these days, right? <laughs> where are you guys? Are you guys, where up in New England, obviously, are you guys close to here? Or? No, we're actually, I'm, I'm actually based uh, right outside of Dallas in a uh, city town called Denton. Oh, um, awesome. Have you guys, you been to Texas? Did you tour through Texas? Uh, I've never played a show. I've, I've been to Texas once. I went to Houston. It was awesome. It was so hot, but it was awesome <laughs> down there. The food was great. <laughs> yeah, no, Houston, I mean, Houston, Austin, and, and Dallas are really like the, the three large areas uh, to definitely experience everything else is like barren wasteland it seems <laughs> but you know it, texas is huge um but yeah no uh right outside of dallas and uh we were derek and i were just talking about how you guys just got a ton of snow and uh how it went from 75 degrees here to like below 30 in the matter of like 12 hours <laughs> oh my god it was that cold down there i didn't know that it's crazy yeah, it, it just it just came in. We're just like, oh, okay, well, there goes the 75 degrees and sunny that we were just experiencing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, she's she's a teacher, third grade, I believe. Yeah. Um, but anyways, didn't mean to derail the conversation. But uh you guys well, I think the one thing I really enjoyed about y'all's sound was you guys have that kind of heavier uh sound at, at points you have the like pop punk sound at points you kind of have that emo punk at times and you kind of have like a really cool flow to things uh with the lyrics and so uh i love how you kind of combine all of those elements together and kind of create your own sound um would you say that there's a band or an artist or a genre out there that you feel like influences you guys the most um well first of all thank you appreciate the kind words <laughs> but yeah. I uh I don't know I feel like kind of everything that you you just described like all the like you know different genres and stuff that we try to incorporate like I feel like it's kind of just happened over time like at, at, at the beginning we I think we were a little more straightforward maybe like like leaning in a pop punk direction like with some heavier elements and I think over time we got into some of that and then um some of the some of the emo rap stuff or whatever you want to call it. Um, I always, <laughs> yeah. I always like to say this. I feel like I'm sound, I sound like a broken record. I've said this so many times, but a lot of that is because I'm not like a great, like technical singer, you know? So sometimes I like to try to do stuff like that with like faster lyrics or, you know, a delivery like that to keep things interesting. Cause I, I'm not, I don't have the kind of pretty voice that I can hit crazy <laughs> notes with. So I got to do something to stick out. Um, but as far as like big influences, I mean, we all listen to different, I'd say like Derek probably, listens to the heaviest ryan too but they listen to a little more heavier stuff than me i still like a, a good amount of heavy stuff as well but i don't know recently i've been listening to a lot of like bring me mm -hmm. um i really like that new architects record um pop punk stuff i love like story so far i love the one d is like like a lot of stuff right now i know d is is a little more um into some older stuff but heaviest stuff too what was that band we were talking about the other day d like spirit box or something Oh yeah, Ryan Ryan's into them. Yep. Oh, Ryan is, yeah. So we yeah. all kind of listen to a lot of different stuff, I think, right? Like mm -hmm. Yeah, I would I would I would say so. Um it all falls under the same umbrella, I think, but different sides of the umbrella, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I don't even know what to think. Yeah, no, I I I feel like whenever we like we're writing something, no matter what, it's always gonna sound like a, a like a driveway song just because of like ability like we don't we're not mm -hmm. crazy musicians so we can't do some of the technical <laughs> stuff that some of these bands do but we I mean, are. it still sounds fantastic you know but <laughs> in your in y'all's own way you know like you said thank you in, man in the driveways way no you you bring up bring me and i think i've brought, I've, I've probably talked about bring me the horizon with like the last three artist bands that I've, I've chatted with just because they are doing some just really cool things in the scene and kind of like paving a way for for the rock genre you know you, did you guys see i'm sure you did but him and ed sharon at the brits yeah the last like 20 seconds was sick that was crazy <laughs> <laughs> and and they just confirmed today they're going to be doing a studio version like ed sheeran and bring me the horizon crossovers is one of those uh where's the simulation going kind of things i know you know? yeah it was cool. I mean, he's obviously such a talented kid, like, or he's crazy musician. And then, yeah, but I agree. Bring me's all. I mean, obviously, you know, growing up, I listened to their heaviest stuff, but I still really like and appreciate some of the newest stuff they've been doing too. They're so experimental. And 
don't know. They still have some heavy, some heavy elements on the new, the newest EP that they put out. Oh yeah, of course. And I, uh, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of cool to see their evolution and how much they've influenced so many artists and bands uh, with their music. It's, and how they can go from here to here and, and kind of not sound like uh, their first album and, and which evolution is, is inevitable, right? You have to, um, yeah. to an extent because times change and people's, you know, interests change and, and whatnot, but they've always been a band that's just been really, really good at that. Yeah. They're crazy, man. They're so talented. And then you bring up spirit box who they're crushing it right now. Uh, Courtney LaPlante is, I mean, she's brutal. Like, yeah. I, I don't know how, what, like what comes out of her mouth sounds the way that it does, but <laughs> it is, it is intense and it's, it's, it's great music. It's, it's heavy. It's, you know, easy to listen to, but it's also really heavy. <laughs> That's a good way to describe it. Yeah. Yeah. No, they, they, there's a lot of very influential, influential bands out there that are like influenced. I got a lot of up and coming bands um, to try things with electronic music and, you know, kind of put some more synth and stuff in, which is interesting because like the synth and hardcore music was like a really big thing in like 2010. And to see it kind of, kind of come back in, it's, it's been really cool. I, I, I love it. I'm a, I'm a huge post hardcore fan and, uh, but that's just kind of where I come from. And that's where the, I don't know if you've seen, but the influence on coffee and sugar is very like rock punk pop uh, post hardcore driven. That's kind of where my interest kind of lay. And then Morgan, who's the other side of coffee and sugar, he, he enjoys our crossovers on the pop pop punk stuff. And then he enjoys more of like the classic rock and the, you know, the David Bowie's of the world and, and stuff like that. So that's cool. Then you guys have a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, it, it's a blessing and a curse because it's like, you know, you got alternative press and rock sound and all of those publications, you know, ghost killer entertainment, um, state of the scene podcast. They're, they're really just one genre driven, but we really want to try to embrace all as best we can and kind of focus in on our interest, but still give it some variety. You know what I mean? But anywho. Um, so I wanted to point out, on October Forever, uh, how Hold It Together being the first song on the track, essentially it ties into October Forever being like the the bow on top of that album and how they kind of reference each other. I love that. And the the beginning of Hold It Together with that, like, I'm, I'm, I'm really poor with music terms, but like just the picking on the guitar that you guys have that comes in, dude. That, that's just so clean and it's like it like like entices a feeling you know in you that you're like all right i gotta keep listening to this um i, I don't know i i really love that album i i love the skeptic the skeptic as well but um i'd love to talk about october forever and kind of what y'all's writing process behind that was and you know what the kind of reaction to that album was yeah dude thank you i, I appreciate it. that was the <laughs> The only thing we knew for sure when we were doing track listing for that album was Hold It Together was first and October Forever was last and everything else took a while to figure out. But, um, yeah, no, that, um, that, that album was like definitely, um, that was COVID times, you know, like, what, like, well, it still is, I should say, but that was at the, the height of the, the pandemic. And, um, that was when we were like, uh, D was locked down and, and Ryan and I were really not seeing too many people either. And so, and I, I'm we, like Derek mentioned earlier, we're teachers. So that was the, when uh, COVID first got really bad in March of whatever it's been two, almost yeah. two years ago. Um, we didn't have for, like, for lack of a better word, like we weren't doing uh, school every day on the computer. We were kind of taking it week by week. So there was basically a few months there where I didn't have a whole lot to do for work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I had a whole lot of time. So I was just writing and recording demos, which I'll always do. And I'll always send to Ryan and D and then me and uh, D Ryan and I will get in a room and kind of go over things and fine tune things before we go to the studio. And um, mm-hmm. with October forever, it was just a whole lot of, a lot of emails back and forth, <laughs> a lot of like sending things and, and planning stuff. And then talking with our producer, Tommy, um, Tom Inello and kind of getting things ready. Um, and I think maybe, maybe the uh, part of the reason for, that album being so like interconnected in that way is because 
all those songs were like written in the same two months. <laughs> so mm-hmm. they were just a whole lot of, uh, whatever the word is that a lot of there's blurred lines between some of those, you know, and, yeah. um, but that, that writing process was definitely different. We, we were able at the end, like us three were able to meet up and go over some things, but there was a lot of time at the beginning where with a lot of those songs, we never really got to get in a room and, and play them cohesively. It was a lot of just, mm-hmm. here's a demo. Here's an idea. Let's meet up in the car. Let's like tap on our, the steering wheel and try to figure out what <laughs> yeah. we're going to do where, but we, we made it work, but, it was an interesting uh, recording process for sure. No, yeah, I, I see it. it was released in 2020, which I, I mean, 2020 was, was a blessing and curse for, I think everyone, um, you know, time to, for, for musicians and artists and bands to kind of, you can't tour, you can't go do anything, can't go to the studio. It's like, take time to write. And a lot of, a lot of bands did. And that's something I've, I've been talking about with people and that's what they they did is they just Mm -hmm. took time to focus on marketing their band writing new music and you know getting creating demos to get ready to go to the studio and and stuff like that so um i I would say that i I listened to night terrors all the way through and then i went to october forever and i found myself listening to that kind of all the way through go back all the way through because it it's one of the i feel like it's it's an album that it's like one big song almost you know like it, it, it's like you can it's so easy to just hit play and just let it play and and sometimes you don't even realize you're going into the next song it's just it's it just happens kind of thing um so that's, that's i appreciate really, that thank you yeah that's what i really liked about that uh that album and then you know i went through skeletons and then the skeptic kind of kind of the same mood i think there's still there's a little bit more contrast in uh in the skeptic i felt like um I mean, would, would you guys agree with that? Yeah, I think so. I remember like, like D, D and I were talking about when we were kind of decide, cause we, we started October forever um, recording it so long ago before we put it out. Do you know what I mean? Whether it's working or getting into the studio in like, geez, like the very early summer or late spring of uh, 2020. And I remember as we started getting um, the songs more put together, we had a lot of debate on like, what's the single for this album? Mm. Because like, I, like I love October forever and I'm pumped that it, you know, it came out the way it did, but I still don't think it's perfect. There's still a lot of things I hear that I hate. And, (laughs) and there's definitely one of them, which is on me in a lot of ways is I don't think there's really a single (laughs) on the album. And so, um, so that difference that you just talked about between October forever and skeptic was definitely deliberate Mm -hmm. um, because Whereas October Forever is kind of like, sometimes I, sometimes the songs blend, like the middle of the CD to me is just a big song. You know what I mean? It's just mm-hmm. kind of like, and, and, it, and that's good and bad. You know, it's good to be able to listen to it in that way. But I think with Skeptic, I was like, all right, let's write two singles, like Obsession and Skeptic. They're short and they're clearly singles. And then let's kind of mm-hmm. go all over the place with the rest of the, the e- we call it an EP. Spotify calls it an album because there's seven songs, but yeah, but let's go all over the place with the EP. So yeah, I think part of the reason for, uh, like I said, skeptic being that way is because October Forever was so fluid or kind mm-hmm. of continue to a fault, maybe. <laughs> you definitely- know, I, I, I would say like I, I enjoy, you know, I do enjoy contrast in albums, but sometimes it's too much contrast, right? Like mm-hmm. um, I, I do like to listen to pop music. I, I would say Ed Sheeran is probably one of the the artists I can listen to. I would say probably up top favorite artist songwriter um and he he has a lot of contrast in his 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 newer albums which i think is okay it can i think t- sometimes to a fault but i think what you guys did with october forever it's something that i can put on if i'm working working on whatever it is for work and just continually listen to right which is a, a huge positive positive. and i would say you know tying it all together with with the first and the last song, I, I just thought it was super unique. You know, it reminds me of uh, Knuckle Pucks, uh, Evergreen album. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they kind of did something similar where they were referencing other songs uh, in other songs. And I, I, th- I, I feel like you don't see that a lot. So I think from a, from a unique standpoint, I think you guys had that one kind of, kind of sealed the deal with it. So it's my opinion there. Thank you, man. No, that's something we've always, uh, like, I remember D and I used to talk about this back with the, all the way back in the sky seems closer, just trying to have 
the lyrics and the continuity and whatnot, but not kind of walking a, a thin line sometimes between like, I don't want to overdo it and try to mm -hmm. force little things. It's more like whatever the right word is just having the, um, not like an Easter egg, but just having those lyrics kind of relate to each song in some way without trying to force it too much. And hopefully we, uh, we've done it tastefully, <laughs> not too in your face or anything like that, you know? No, not at all. But in the, but it also like your sound has varying moods and elements to it that does give contrast in other ways. I think that's, mm. that's also very true. Um, so no, that's, no, that's cool. I, I, I just thought that you guys had a unique sound that I hadn't really heard in a while, you know, from like the, I'm, I'm all about genre blending. I don't, I don't know if you know the band, Bill Murray, it's Johnny Frank's project. Mm -hmm. yep. Um, Yep. And he does such a fabulous job of blending genres together that you just wouldn't ever hear, you know? Um, and in the last like two or three years, he's just continued to create very unique and enticing music, which I think you have to do today to, to kind of get noticed, you know? Yeah. That band is, those guys are super talented and I know what you mean. It's so hard to, to stick out these days. I feel like, D, we have this conversation all the time, like what genre is our band? You know, I don't even, it's not that we're doing crazy dynamic things. I just feel like we're always kind of in between stuff. I don't know. I feel like people have called us easy core before and, and <laughs> sometimes we get pop punk or slash post hardcore. I, don't, I never know what exactly we are. <laughs> I love, I early love y'all's. Early 2000s uh... Warped Tour. Yeah, early 2000s yeah. Warped Tour, yeah. Warped Tour, that's, <laughs> if you were there, you, you might have saw us if we were there. <laughs> that's it. Oh no, I, I was there. Uh, but I didn't know what I enjoyed back in 2010. It was just like, I just knew I liked it. What really, regardless, if it was in, if it fell in like the hardcore metal genre, I, I would listen to it kind of thing. <laughs> at, at one point I was listening to like, as they lay dying and I, I don't listen to them anymore today, but like at the time I was like, this is, this is hardcore. This is brutal. Like, this is what people are supposed to like in this, in this genre, you know? Um, uh, but I liked what you guys put as your bio on Spotify, like just straight and to the point. <laughs> that yeah, was, that was, uh, yeah. that was Derek. Like any great social media contribution we have is always Derek. <laughs> and all that bio has stood the test of time. I don't think we'll ever change. <laughs> no, you, you, can't. you can't. From 2002 <laughs> to about 2008. I mean, I, I would, I would honestly wouldn't like put you guys in that, in that category, but you know. Uh, I think it's interesting to, to just that you guys kind of describe yourselves that way. Um, so I, I was talking to my buddy Lucas earlier today and I was letting him know that I was going to be chatting with you guys. And he had a few questions that uh, he wanted me to ask. And um, I don't know how much touring you guys have done, but he was curious what you guys have for like pre-show like rituals or is there anything you guys do before a show to kind of get you amped and ready to perform? Yeah. Taco Bell. Taco Bell. Yeah. <laughs> it's always, that's all Taco Bell. And then we normally go buy batteries for the wireless in air system. We always need fresh yep. batteries. That's like the ritual. Yeah, right. Right. Pat. That's it. Like, Sometimes we'll, that. we'll get like snacks for later at like a gas oh, station exactly. or something. Yeah. I had a brief stint where I was buying scratch tickets. <laughs> 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 that one went away luckily, but also, um, what was I just going to say? Don't we? Um... Oh, yeah. We, what I was going to say is that uh, Derek was on this crusade to get us sponsored by Taco Bell <laughs> to like, what was it? The $500 gift card or something? Oh, yeah. They have a, it's called Feed the Beat. And they, mm -hmm. hook, these, they hook bands up with, with gift cards. And it's like, we're like the biggest Taco Bell. Like, you should see our rewards. Our driveways being rewards. Taco Bell yep. rewards. It's like, we're... Taco Bell, come on. If you're listening, yeah. you, you got to hook us up. So I, I first heard about that because I have some buddies that are in a band that um, are getting ready to go on their first tour. And that's kind of what they're trying to do is like get that that Taco Bell sponsorship so they can eat Taco <laughs> Bell on the road. And I'm like, you guys are going to come back like 15, 20 pounds heavier from eating all of that Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah, I that's definitely, when we were in the studio for both like Skeptic and October Forever, my uh, my producer Tommy and I like we when all of us are together it's it's always guaranteed Taco Bell and I I, I probably put on a few pounds in like the, <laughs> the middle of recording <laughs> like, but 
cool. They didn't so want to. They didn't want to sponsor us, though. Big letdown. Uh, we'll, we'll try again next year. We'll try again. Yeah. So, um, have you have you guys toured as driveways um, in the past already, or we we haven't? Uh, like like no. w- the thing is, like when we started the like this band, like mm-hmm. you know, because like we're in our thirties now, which which is fine. We still love doing it, but yeah, you know, we kind of started this as adults with jobs and responsibilities Mm -hmm. and and wives and families and and whatnot so it's just like it's a hard thing to commit to i will say we're we have a lot planned for this year d right i feel like we have more planned for this year than in in years past in terms of a couple of weekenders and a lot of shows um more consistently you know every month for a little while here but we've never gone on a tour um because obviously it would get in the way of work Mm -hmm. (laughs) oh no I, i i get it yeah but we would love to if, if we if we could, it would be great. But it's just a hard mm-hmm. thing to, you know how it is. It's like it would have to be good enough to, you know, make a big decision to quit our jobs or something. You know? Right. And, and, and what is what is what does Ryan do? Ryan works at um kind of like a what does he do? He like he is a dispatcher for a company that leases equipment, um, mm-hmm. sometimes for movie sets, sometimes for like lighting. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it'd probably um, be hard to step away from that too. <laughs> yeah, he kind of has a real job, and then Derek and I. Just... <laughs> hey, you guys have the summers off, you know. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, we and we, and we've taken advantage of that in the past. We've definitely played a good amount, or like D had mentioned earlier, the studio time. But we have never gone on like a real true uh, tour. I don't know if that's in if it's in the cards. Maybe someday. Um, would never say never, but. Right. It's a good, good way to describe it, D, right? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do have like a couple weekenders uh, lined up and that's kind of like we can pick and choose. It's nice because we can pick and choose which weekends I can mm-hmm. I can beg my wife to that let me leave, for, you know, <laughs> three days. Um, but that's we're expanding on that. But like the whole like like even a one week tour, like Ryan's got to save his, his vacation time. Mm-hmm. As teachers, we just can't say, sorry, kids, I'm going on. <laughs> So you yeah. sleep in a van for a hundred bucks a night or something like that. Um, but the weekend is our good start. We're, we're actually, I think we're going to go to try in Chicago. So from Massachusetts, Chicago, mm-hmm. that's pretty, that's like right. pretty long ways for us. But our Spotify tells us that uh, we have listeners, the most listeners in Chicago. Chicago. So. It's crazy. Yeah. So we'll, we're going to go and, there. And, and guess who's number two? Is it Dallas? Is, is it, it Dallas? Dallas? It's yeah. Dallas. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. I actually yeah. didn't know that. I, I feel like we're um we're doing like we're doing more this year than we have in a long. I mean, part of that's COVID, but mm-hmm. um I feel like we we're trying to play out as much as we can for the being the regular Joes that we are. If that makes sense. <laughs> no, I totally. I I, I want to say I totally understand. I'm not in a band, but like I get having a, a job and and those responsibilities. A wife, you know. I, I don't know if y'all have kids, but that just kind of adds uh, to the level of life that you have to to manage um so you know my buddies want me to go on tour with them in august i think uh and you know come take some photos and stuff of them while you know while they play music and i'm just like oh man like i got a day job that i gotta make sure also gets done and uh you know and i'm not even in the band right like you know these these are guys that want to make it their full time like this is they want this to be their life and you know, it's, it's not impossible, you know, but, uh, but I can see where it's like, hey, your guys' lives are already, already started. Right. Yeah, no, it's, that's a pretty good, it's a pretty good way of putting it. Yeah. Well, at the point that we, you know, when we started, we started the band, we were already adults with, with stuff going on, you know, but it's, mm-hmm. but it's become a, but it has become a really cool thing. I mean, it, it's, it's, you know, it's a, a cool thing for all of us. That's kind of like, side job to an extent but like something we really love doing and so it's not that mm-hmm. it's not a big part of our life it's just you know we just can't go on tour <laughs> yeah like, no i get it and you know that kind of so cool <laughs> like, it kind of makes me you know kind of think about like you know from you know recording music right you guys have obviously created an awesome following um you know on spotify on on socials and uh, i heard you guys have a pretty cool following on reddit uh, and I, I guess from a future standpoint, we can, we can, we can dive into this, this a little bit later, but, um, it, do, you, do you guys ever see like a label 
you know, kind of prospecting labels in the future or, or anything like that? Or if you I think wanted, like, I think, I think where we're at with it is like, we would never say never to anything and we're always open to a, a conversation but we're just at a point where it's like, it, it would be something that needs to make sense f- for us. Do you know what I mean? Like we mm-hmm. like if would love if a label contacted us, be super humble, then would totally be down to have a conversation. But it's just one of those things where kind of everything we're, you know, describing is, you know, could get in the way it would, it would need to be, um, it would need to make sense and be worth it for us to make a big move like that. Do you know what I mean? And, and where yeah. we're at now, things are going pretty good in terms of like, you know, we're getting a little bit to um, financially to put back into the band. And mm-hmm. it's not something that we pay for out of our, our own pocket all the time. There's still a little bit of that, but we've been fortunate in that way. But it would just need to be a, a situation that made sense. But we would never shoot down a conversation, if that makes sense. <laughs> right. No, I, I totally get that. And, you know, everything I know about labels is you and I've talked about this with another guy on another episode of, you know, you, you take out a loan, essentially. Uh, yeah like, yeah you know and and you have to pay back that loan with everything that you're doing with music and cd sales and and all that stuff so uh it's an undertaking from from what i understand and uh but from a from a getting your your music out there and and stuff like can't beat being on like a a fearless or a rise or a um whoever you know that are big labels in the scene for sure yeah some great labels out there absolutely it's just i think this it would be a different conversation if we were like young kids you know <laughs> but, <laughs> just, but, but it's something that we've thought about and if, if the time comes we'll we'll have a conversation we'll figure it out you know mm-hmm. uh, yeah i was talking with a, a guy named orion uh he's in a band called in dying arms um if you've ever heard of them and they've been around since 2008 and still making music today and one of the points he made he's like he's like look dude i'm older i have money i can put money into things and that's a good point because i feel like younger bands don't always have that that luxury of already kind of having money to invest in Mm -hmm. their band you know so there there is a pro to being older and having your shit together (laughs) (laughs) Yep, that, that's like a good point like, it's like um if like a label they're gonna give us money but it's it's we already have that like we already have that it's with mm-hmm. three salaries and then whatever comes in for the band which we don't really even really it's like not even we we try we don't even really try hard to put ourselves out there i, I don't know it's not like i wouldn't ex- i wouldn't want like i work hard all day at school i don't want to have to come home from school and work really hard for a, a label to pay them back so it's it's like almost it's yeah. it helps yeah I, I agree with that it's like because we're doing it for ourselves it makes some of the extra stuff that we put in more more worth it. but not that like again not that we're like totally opposed to anything but it's just you know it's tough <laughs> it's mm-hmm. tough to like think of a situation that would make sense but but yeah and it, it, you're right it is it is good kind of being older and kind of having your stuff together so that if we need to buy gear or something we can actually just buy it <laughs> not that yeah. we're like we're loaded or anything but... <laughs> no I, yeah i totally get that and especially you, you mentioned gear right like hey if you're going to be playing a show you know you can go buy some in-ears or go get your batteries from wherever for your for your mics <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and stuff is, like yeah. that so that that is definitely a pro to kind of well, being a little bit older and, and being in a band, I was curious, when did you guys start seeing y'all's music kind of take off? We'll just say with, with Spotify, right? Dude, that's a really good question. And I don't know if we actually know the answer. I feel like it happened like, cause the, the, we, we put out a cover of, um, Lil Lucy Vert, like XO Toll Life. Mm-hmm. And it was right after we recorded an EP we were, uh, we did call the sky seems closer. And I had, I had actually made an arrangement of it on like, I used to do demos on GarageBand. It was horrible. And, um, and I said, I sent the arrangement to Ryan and D and me and Ryan were actually kind of like, we're not going to do it. Like, cause I think I last night already did it or someone already did it. I don't know. It was probably better than us. And then Derek was like, nah, we're doing it. <laughs> so we went in the studio, recorded it. And that got on, um, that got on some playlists, which 
which is weird to think about because, you know, uh, Spotify playlists are so massive and a huge part mm-hmm. of success now, but it's, they're pretty recent in terms of um, being as big as they are. Mm-hmm. And this was, this was back in 2017. So I don't know if, if Spotify looked exactly like it does now. I know it was, it was still massive, but I know that that got picked up on something. And then um, a couple of songs that we did from Night Terrors, I think it was a Drop Dead. And I think a few good dreams for a little while were on some playlists. And so our, our numbers kind of were, were going s- slowly up. And then I think in Skeletons got picked up. Pro- I'd probably say when we put out um, Skeletons, like just the that EP was mm-hmm. probably when we first started to really notice like the numbers are, are going up pretty pretty high for for us you know not that we're some massive band but compared to what we were used to which is no one listened to us <laughs> so <laughs> just to be blunt with you but yeah, um, i mean i get it but i think yeah i think right around because i i think right around skeletons was when at least i does that sound right d i feel like that's when we started to really pay attention to the numbers and and look at the uh like the artist app all the time and things like that yeah it seemed like like uzi was definitely a big big pot and then it seemed like overnight when when skeletons and then it was like i think when we hit skeletons it was very consistent like yeah that's, that's a good consistent. call but i think uzi was definitely uh one of the biggest bumps that yeah was that was like the overnight. starting point we had, yeah that, that got that, that got pretty big on like a facebook ad or something and then it was going off oh, on, yeah, yeah, yeah. on um spot and spotify is just so awesome it's just good we say all the time we're just the we're only like a Spotify band. Like we're not really super huge on anything else. Um, and that, and that part of that might just be because Spotify is the biggest by far of the streaming services. But if you looked at us on YouTube or Instagram, you'd think, Oh yeah, they kind of have whatever. But then mm-hmm. if you look at us on Spotify, we're not crazy, but we're definitely a little bit bigger on there oh, yeah. than we are on anything else. So I don't know. It's interesting. I don't know. Mm-hmm. No, Spotify has been good for a lot of bands, right? Yeah, you, know, you mentioned doing a little Uzi Vert cover. I mean, you 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 bust out a bomb ass cover. People it, people like that. You know, it's that's why our last night is as big as they are. They, they mm-hmm. just do cover. Like I don't know anybody, and I'm not saying it's bad by any means, but I don't know anybody that listens to our last night's actual music. You know, like it's like everyone knows them for their for their covers and that's what sells for them yeah I, I mean i like their a lot of their original stuff but like i'll say it's part of the reason we don't do a lot of covers anymore is because they'll do it first and they'll do it better <laughs> so mm-hmm. we just just stay away <laughs> and they kind of control the market with covers not gonna lie like everyone oh, knows God, yeah. who they are and they're and, i mean and good for them <laughs> they yeah them. absolutely absolutely and they're incredibly talented and in how they put all the arrangements together and people just like look forward to all their, their covers coming out. So definitely good on them. But, you know, my buddies uh, put out a cover of too good at goodbyes by Sam Smith and no one had at least at the time done it. And that was the song that like kind of put them on the map too. And, and now they're, they're climbing and they have management and stuff like that. That's pushing them to continue to grow. But yeah, it takes one solid cover to kind of get you guys, get get you out there. Yeah, you know, I guess so. Yeah, with us, that was definitely <laughs> the, the first thing. And then I think we've just been really lucky that people have kept listening after. Mm-hmm. No, for sure. Um, so how many shows have you guys like played as a band? Uh, I guess since you guys have started, has it just, just kind of here and there whenever you guys can or? At least in the last couple of years. Well, let's not say the last you, what, couple of years, but what do you before think? Before like, 2020. Like 30 or something? Or? Yeah, I'd say between 30 and 30 40. and 40. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Somewhere around there. And, and, and just, obviously last year was just nothing. Was mm-hmm. that last year or the year before, whenever that yeah. And it sucks I mean, because if you know we would have played a, I feel like with the album and stuff, we you know, we would have played out a good amount if we could have, but mm-hmm. um yeah, no, but we haven't played a bunch, but en- enough so that, you know, we have our, our live stuff um, pretty figured out with like, um, well, when I say we, uh, Derek has figured out how to run our live show <laughs> with mm-hmm. uh, back and tracks and everything because we're only a, a three piece, but we have a lot of layers and stuff in our songs. But, you know, I think we've somewhere between 30 and 40 shows total, I'd say. How far south have you guys gone for a show? Uh, uh, Pennsylvania? Uh, that it? oh yeah 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 
Yeah. Right? The Hershey yeah. Park yeah. show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Pennsylvania. Um, and that was like a one off, maybe uh, what was that five years ago or something? That was a long time. But we are gonna do uh yeah. Chicago this where else are we going? Chicago, um, Ohio, yep. upstate New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, back to your, your hometown, a home state, I should say. <laughs> oh yeah, so, no, Pat wasn't Pat wasn't on the call. I'm I'm I was born in Connecticut and lived up there for like six years. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Do you remember was it when you were a kid or was it like yeah, recently? I was a kid. I think oh, I gotcha. I moved from Connecticut. Um I lived between New Jersey and Connecticut. Um gotcha. I was New Jersey and then Connecticut and then New Jersey and then back to Connecticut and then moved down to Texas when I was in like third grade. Got gotcha, you, okay. Yeah. So, okay, so Chicago, I mean, Ohio, as barren as Ohio is, probably be a great state for you guys to do a show just because of how many awesome bands came out of that state, which is mm-hmm. beyond me, but so many great bands came out of that state. Yeah, so, like, uh, Rise Records headquarters, right? Essentially. Always Prada, all, all those Rise bands from... Attack Attack. Yeah, Attack Attack, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That was, that was a band that was very uh, instrumental in changing the genre. And I mean, now they're back and that's, that's interesting to see, but that's attack attack for you. But Johnny, Johnny (laughs) and Johnny and Johnny and Caleb, I think are two very talented people. And I'm, I look forward to more Beartooth and, and more Bill Murray out of them because they're crushing it. Absolutely. Yeah. I love both of those bands um i have a few more questions for you guys that um i like to round out these these episodes with um the first one is what can we expect in 2022 um if you can share yeah yeah um well like we mentioned earlier which we're been putting a lot of um time effort into you know getting uh the you know the live set put together and and trying to play a good amount of shows this year by our standards so that's that's a big thing and then um gets uh some vinyls coming out soon um some new merch d right yeah it actually it just showed up on the doorstep today yeah nice (laughs) we're doing we're one of the shows that we're um playing in in march is kind of like a whatever anniversary show for um an ep we put out called the sky seems close to five years ago Mm -hmm. um so we're gonna do a couple of shows on that um we're gonna play the whole album in its entirety which we haven't done in ever (laughs) so we're gonna do that and then put out some merch and a vinyl of of that album and then i think it's safe to say too we'll be back um recording something for the fall i don't know how i don't think it's going to be an album this time around um but definitely shooting to already started demoing and thinking about some maybe like an ep or something like that in the fall as well halloween themed right <laughs> there's a chance <laughs> there's a 99.9 percent chance something along those lines <laughs> there has to be a pumpkin on the cover we'll sneak one on there yeah <laughs> <laughs> i miss anything do you? are we doing anything else uh no no just actually like you said more shows than normal for for us which is which is good which is good that's exciting. And, you know, I, I tell everyone I talk to, if you ever want to come on down to Texas and uh, play a Dallas show, um, we have a really, like, it's kind of weird, but we have a really big post-hardcore pop punk uh, emo kind of, <clears throat> I don't know, population <laughs> here. Yeah. Um, and I feel like you guys would crush it down here if obviously, you know, your wives and your job and, you know, if you have kids, your kids allowed it. <laughs> That would be if we could ever, yeah, maybe someday we could swing one of these trips down to Texas. I'd love it. It's, we just it's gotta take the time. wives and kids with us. That's what we gotta do. We gotta, <laughs> yeah, gotta make it a vacation. Make yeah, it vacation. Um, yeah. that yeah, could yeah. be that could be super fun or uh the opposite. <laughs> 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 depending, depending. But um, all right, cool, cool, cool. And then um before we jump into the last question that I have, I do want to know um Wait, no, I already asked that. What do you guys got going? Yeah, yeah, so 2022. So, oh yeah, 
do you guys have anything that you want to tell uh, the people that listen to our podcast uh, outside of what you've already mentioned uh, for what's going on in 2022? Um, I would say just thanks for listening. <laughs> um, thank you for listening to this interview and for listening to us. Um, and also, yeah, just keep your eyes open for um, some new merch coming down the road. Um, some new, uh, some new vinyls as well. Um, maybe um, possibly a remaster uh, re-release of this guy seems closer coming down the road. Um, and that's it. <laughs> Keep listening. Right. Please. If, if the listeners have never heard of Drivewood, which song are they going to listen to? What song do you suggest? Ooh, on the on the sky seems closer. No, uh, just uh, in general. Oh, in in general, uh, yeah. if people haven't listened, I would say listen to the song "Are You Afraid of the Dark" on October Forever. It's a good one. Okay. What'd you say, D? Uh, maybe I I go drop dead. You'd say drop dead. Yeah, I would say drop dead. What about you, James? What should people listen to if they never heard us before? You know, that's I I knew that was coming, and I was sitting here looking at October Forever and Skeptic and. I really like both those albums. Um, I, I I feel like, and, and I don't know if this is a, a great answer, but I really love how Hold It Together starts. It's like, listen to Hold It Together and then listen to October Forever because it's like almost like their one song, it seems. So I, it. I just, I love the intro to uh, Hold It Together. Just, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like a sucker for like a very clean guitar pick uh kind of I'm, I'm that kind of person but uh yeah awesome all right final question i ask this to everyone i bring on is how do you like your coffee <laughs> <laughs> i uh I, I gotta be honest i just started doing this i don't know if this is like weird or something but i get oat oat milk in my coffee now i don't know when i go to dunks i get them on this kick with it so that's my my i get a, a regular iced with oat milk now Okay. All That's right. where I'm at in my life right now. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I'll, 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 same I'll, iced. Well, in the morning, in the morning now, it's going to be a, a hot cup to start the day, but then you got to go to Dunks or Starbucks to get your ice. But yeah, I couldn't start. I couldn't tell the difference between half and half and oat milk, but I believe oat milk is healthier for you. Maybe. That's, I don't know. That's what I heard. So I just started yeah. getting oat milk. I was like, all right, I'll just get that. It's healthier. But, uh, and then whatever, give me some different flavor. I'll throw a flavor in there. So. so, so there's not a lot of Dunkin' Donuts down here in Texas. It's, I know it's a more Northeast kind of thing. Um, but I would, I would ask the question, you know, if you had to pick Starbucks or Dunks, you know, where do you go? I would pick Dunks only because if I get Starbucks, my heart like races, <laughs> <laughs> like the caffeine is like so strong and uh, it doesn't happen all the time, but I'm always scared to like get I'll get like something there. I just won't get coffee. So for a coffee, I, I would say dunks. What about yeah, you, Derek? It, it's got to be dunks. I mean, it, it was like nine degrees today, this morning when I was leaving for work at 6.30. But you know, I still, I still got my dunks iced coffee today. <laughs> I had to do it. There you go. I wish we had more dunks down here. And, and they actually really have good donuts. So uh, we're the unfortunate ones in the South. We have, we have the Starbucks. <laughs> I was going to say, what is there another coffee shop down there that's like a Texas thing or is it just? Well, I, I'm sure it's the same in the Northeast and everywhere else, but there's a ton of local shops. Oh, uh, of course. Local yeah. coffee shops that, you know, have coffee and uh, different kinds of coffee and uh, either like your breakfast foods uh, that are quick and stuff. But um, I would say Starbucks probably like controls the market down here. So. Nice yeah all righty well guys i i really appreciate it this was fun i you know again i love y'all's music and i've enjoyed everything that i've heard like i said october forever i think takes a cake for me on on albums just because it's such an easy listen and uh i will continue to recommend you guys to people who are looking for new music and uh you know i appreciate y'all's time and uh carving this out for us Oh, James, thank, thank you for thanks. having us. Thank you. Really yeah. appreciate it, man. Thanks for the support too. Sorry I joined the Google Meet instead of the Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> that is all good, dude. Technology is hard. It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, guys. Well, hey, I'll let you guys get back to your night. I'm going to go do a Valentine's dinner with my wife and uh, call it a night. There you go. All right. Thanks, again. Thanks again, man. Have a good one. All right, later, guys. I don't know if I can hold it together. My eyes turning cold with the weather. October forever. I'm